presentation today will highlight results from a phase three uh, trial exploring whether the use of a mobile application can help in s monitoring symptoms in patients with lung cancer. So I'd like to uh, introduce Dr. Fabrice Denis, a researcher at the Institut Interregional de Cancerologie Jean Bernard in Le Mans, France. And I hope I did that correctly, Dr. Yes, Denis. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gans. Thank you, everybody. So I'll be talking about the results of our trial comparing for the first time a web application mediated follow-up to standard modalities in lung cancer patients. Why should we use web application in lung cancer? Lung cancer is responsible of more than one million deaths every year worldwide. There are no standard follow-up to detect relapse, and patients are usually visiting their oncologist every three to six months with repeated CT scans. However, relapses are frequent and often symptomatic, and they do not occur during plain visit. Symptomatic relapsing patients often wait their plain visit during many weeks, leading to health degradation and non-optimal therapy, which is reserved to patients having good health conditions because of potential high toxicity. So we developed a web-mediated follow-up called MoveCare to allow an early detection of relapse or dangerous medical condition as, as well as early supportive care triggering by analyzing symptoms re reported by patients. We compared it in this phase three multicentric trial to usual non-personalized follow-up <coughs> that used numerous, excuse me, that used numerous imaging by CT scan. It was conducted in five academic and private centers in France. Eligible patients had non-progressive high-risk lung cancer. They must have internet access, PS less than three, that means good to average general health status, and an initial symptomatic score less than seven, which means low or moderate symptoms intensity regarding asthenia, breathlessness, cough, pain, and anorexia. TKI or maintenance therapy were allowed. Plain monitoring, visit with, visit, plain monitoring visit frequency was identical in both groups every three months or more. Plain CT scans were performed every three to six months according to cancer stage in control arm. Additional CT scans could be performed at investigator discretions at any time in both arms. In experimental arm, the plain CT scans were performed every six to 12 months only according to cancer stage two. But an anticipated visit and imaging was performed following web application notification suggested by the algorithm. Primary outcome was overall survival. The main results, the study was stopped after the plain interim survival analysis that occurred after 121 available patients because of survival benefit favoring move care arm. Median follow-up was nine months. The one-year survival was 75% in move care arm versus 49 in, move, in control arm. Median survival was 19 months in move care arm and 12 in control arm. So median overall survival improvement was seven months. There were three times less death in move care arm with a high p-value. 77 of relapsing patients in experimental arm had a good performance status at relapse versus only 33% in control arm. This led to 74% 74 per, 74 of patients receiving optimal therapy in move care arm versus 33 in control arm. And the number of imaging was reduced by 50% per patient per year. How does move care work? It's a web-mediated follow-up in which patients report 12 symptoms weekly using smartphone or PC. They could also use a free text window. An algorithm analyzes dynamic and association of symptoms and triggered email alerts to caregiver if relapse or dangerous medical condition are suggested. Following email alert, a direct contact with patients is done by phone, and if alert is confirmed, anticipated visit and ad adequate imaging was organized. The sensitivity of the algorithm was high and validated in two prospective studies. So as a conclusion, MoveCare allowed earlier detection of relapse it improved overall survival for three reasons. It allowed higher performance status at relapse detection, leading to more optimal therapy for relapsing patients. Dangerous medical conditions were detected earlier and treated earlier. It favored earlier supportive care, which improved quality of life. 
less imaging were needed and performed at the right time. It was assessed in a rigorous development program in almost 300 patients, and it validates the added clinical value of e-health. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, Dr. Denis. And I think just to kind of reflect on this particular presentation, uh, if we had a drug or some new intervention that caused this level of survival benefit, wouldn't we want to go out and use it? I mean, this is a tremendous advance. Second, this is personalized medicine. This is really tailoring it to the patient, and you can see how simple it is to collect this kind of data from the patient and then bring them in, in between what would have been a scheduled visit. The patient may have put off symptoms, oh, I don't want to bother the doctor, I don't want to bother my team, but it's alerting the team that there's something going on. And finally, using tests when appropriate, not on a schedule, leads to avoidance of waste in the follow-up of our care of our patients. And this is really what the Choosing Wisely campaign is trying to do, is to not do things that are not adding value to the care of our patients.